So electricity map is a growing project and it became like maybe bigger than, than you thought. There's yep. some company now in the making called Tomorrow. What is the idea of tomorrow? What's right. your vision with tomorrow? So, so when I created the electricity map, I thought that this would be one of many initiatives um, that would try to fix climate change in a global sense. And if you look at the core uh, aspects that I believe are super important if you want to fix climate change, there's this two of them. The first one is it needs to be a commodity to understand what is the footprint of something that I'm doing, whether it's consuming my electricity, taking my car, uh, eating some meat and so on, buying a pen, whatever. The other thing is no one understands what a kilogram of CO2 means. Right? And so if you, you need to have some kind of intuition about those things are in order to make better choices in your daily life, in order to educate yourself on the different policies we can make in order to vote for the right people and so on. And the only way we're going to get there is if we build products uh, that appeal to people that are well designed and in that sense electricity map was just a, a, a small initiative in this very wide uh, area of opportunity. So the mission statement we have at Tomorrow is that we want to help the world understand and reduce their carbon emission and we want to empower them to do so, whether it's individuals or companies. And so in that sense, we're taking the structure of electricity map, open source and so on, and replicating it to different verticals. So the first thing we're doing is that we're not building an app that will enable myself, uh, me, to understand what are my personal carbon emissions from the electricity that I use, but mm -hmm. also from maybe the Tesla that I'm charging, right. or from the T-shirt that I just bought at H&M, H&M or from the public service station that I'm taking, from the, from the restaurant meal that I just ate, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the way we're building it is by connecting to various services and apps that you already have. One example is, for example, if you, are, if you use the Uber taxi app, you can connect it to the app, and as soon as you take an Uber ride, it will automatically appear in the app and will calculate the footprint of it. Mm. And because this is, of course, very, very you know, data-intensive and also privacy-invading, um, we have been very aware about this since the beginning uh -huh. and all the data only lies on your phone. So it's the phone that gets the data from Uber, it doesn't go through our servers, uh, which also means that we never see your data and that's not how we're going to earn the money either. We're not earning money on the data, we're not selling ads, we're not doing profiling, none of that things. Uh, we're going to earn money by selling the same solution to companies, basically. So have right. a carbon accounting system automated for companies, but the first thing we're building it first for individuals. Okay. Um, I know you're uh, in a better phase right now. Do yeah. you have the app with you and could show? Yeah, sure. How it show works. a little bit about uh, about it if you want. So, so, so the way it works is that here you have uh, you have an app store here, uh, which we call in the integration store. Actually, we mm -hmm. completely open source. So you can build your own integration if you want. Uh, the idea is that you connect to, uh, for example, your smart meter at home. So I'm, I'm customer at Barry, a Danish retailer, so I can connect it here. Right. Um, if you're in France, you can connect your Linky. Um, and if you have a Renault Zoe, the electric vehicle, or a Tesla, you can connect it here. Mm -hmm. And what this will do is that it will fetch periodically from the car or from the smart meter, when did you use electricity and what is the associated footprint here. Uh, and you can connect other services. Here I've connected my, my bank account here. Um, this tells me uh, when I buy some stuff, what is the footprint of it. Um, we are playing around with some experimental activity detection system that uses the phone sensors to figure out what is the transportation mode you are currently in, if you're biking, taking the car, taking uh -huh. the train, so on. And then we have public transportation uh, systems as well, like Heisekold in Denmark or Transport for London in, in the UK. Uh, basically, it's just a card. You you beep when you move, when you start your journey. You beep when you finish your journey, ah, and that, that information great. arrives to us, and we can say, okay, you took the train. Um, here's the impact of it. Same with Ryanair, Tramline, uh, Tripit, Uber, and, and Wizzer are, are the are the same ones. And you can see here the list of contributors that have worked on the app right now. And so only a few of them, of course, because this is still in the in beta. Right. Um, so this is optimizing what this event, for example, is trying to achieve, right? This is a climate neutral conference right now and every attendee uh, before he attended the, he or she attended the conference had to enter with which means of transport uh, the person was arriving and departing and uh, how many kilometers you were traveling, but you had to put it in manually yeah. and like you cannot expect a massive, like you cannot expect the public to start to write down their numbers of kilometers and so on. So you're trying to to automize 
your footprint. So, so if you look at here, actually, I'm showing you here. So this is my this is my work account here. Um, so my work account are all my emissions that I've marked as professional. In a sense. So I can mark it as a, as personal or professional. And so here to come for the conference, you can see here at uh, at 10:37 I took an Uber, 1.6 kilogram because it's 15 minutes of drive. Oh, right. This one, the top yes. one. Uh, there's a plane here that I took to Geneva. There's public transit to go to the to the airport. Um, and of course, there's some things missing here. But but the idea is that we automate more and more here as we move along. Um, and you can see here my personal emissions. There's a bunch of them here. I have a Spotify account, so that that counts for some emissions taken from my credit card. Um, I've, I've How does Spotify uh, uh, produce emissions? What's the yeah. backstory behind it? Yeah, so, so if you look at Spotify, they would count as digital purchases in general. Mm -hmm. And digital purchases represent emissions that happen throughout the whole of, the, of the Spotify's uh, activities. So, so the servers they use, you know, the employees flying around and so on and so forth. So you think everything that is required for the Spotify service to actually exist. And right. we have some formula that tries to to have to predict the average of what such services will produce. Or? Yeah. So you 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 um, what we do here with Spotify is that the input data we have is how much you spent on Spotify. Yeah. And so you can make models that say for each euro that you spent on a given category, purchase category, yeah. right. those are expected greenhouse gas emissions for it. So mm -hmm. this is more you know a, a top down approach instead of a bottom-up that we say, okay, now I'm calculating the emissions of every employee and every activity of Spotify, and then I come up to the final number, uh, which is, you know, one yeah. hour of subscription in Spotify emits that much. And of course, ideally, we want to get there, yeah. but the way we're designing a system is that it's robust to ev um, any level of granularity you're giving it. So if you just give an amount, you say, okay, I bought a taxi 10 euros, then we're going to make some estimations to give you a number. It might not be the best one, but it's already, you know, a good pointer. But if you say, I drove exactly 10 kilometers uh, oh. with an SUV, uh, we were three people in the car and so on and so forth, oh. then we can start making better estimates there. So how does your personal carbon footprint uh, look like? Can, yeah. you, can you already sure. see it? So, so this is, um, so this is my, my footprint. So let me take actually another month that is more interesting. Because, okay, so if, if you look here, uh, for example, this is uh, the month of November. Right. And you can see here that it's mostly dominated by my travel. And my travel is actually a plane that I took here. So the plane All immediately right. ruins okay. your, your whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at here, a month where I didn't take the plane here, um, then here you have uh, electricity, which represents a small portion of my, right, my footprint the yellow part. Time, the yellow part. You have purchases, orange. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. I could look, but I don't know exactly what I bought uh, uh, at the like middle of the month. Um, you have travel here, and then you have food as well. And food is based on a, on a preference that I'm putting in, where I'm saying, you know, I roughly meet, uh, uh, meet <laughs> I roughly eat um, a varied diet, sometimes meat, sometimes not. Yeah. And then I can edit it on a daily basis if I want to correct it. But the idea is that it, it should be roughly automatic, mm -hmm. and then you can start saying exactly what you ate. You can put ingredients and stuff right. if you want there. Like I mean, I can it's, actually not, it's not important to have like every gram of your food but to have like your general well, diet. So if you want you can actually put all, all grams of your food here you can say I don't know if you go on ingredients here um, you can actually say exactly what, what you want to eat I don't know like milk yogurt and you can put some other things like potatoes vegetable rice lentils I mean you can really go deep if you want to yeah. you know, put exactly your uh, but your for footprint. people who, who like are would be too lazy to put in like yeah. the exact grams so you can put in some average exactly some simpler options okay. yeah Okay, we can see though that the food is actually the biggest part of your carbon footprint. Yeah. In this Honestly, case. I mean, and then we have this home screen which shows you like a data visualization in, in bubbles. And so the size of the bubble showcases the amount of emissions. And I mean, if you look at this thing, like the, the plane. Are these like two planes? Yeah, it's two okay. planes. And the plane is basically like the biggest source of emissions by far. I mean, look right. at how big this thing is compared right. to like the small bubbles, which are you know, daily food and daily electricity usage. Um, then, then it's huge. Um, all right. So, how how big is tomorrow at the moment? So we are seven people at tomorrow right now. Uh, we're hiring new people. I mean, honestly, the biggest uh, hurdle for us right now is to hire the right people because we see a huge interest in the industry as well. Mm, you have trends that have started in the last year where suddenly shareholders of large companies are starting to put pressure on the CEO and the employees in order to reach carbon neutrality targets. So I'll just tell the CEO, you know, you have 10 years. By 10 years, I want us to be carbon neutral. 
and they make a big press announcement, everyone is getting likes on social media, and then the CEO is left to, yeah, but how do I actually implement this in practice? Right. And so they come to us in order to see, but is there anything we can do? How can we employ, uh, sorry, um, engage our employees with tools and so on? How can we get a, a good estimate of our footprint? How can we put some KPIs that can follow month over month and see that we're actually on track to reduce those things? And this is sort of the corporate solution that we're building in conjunction with this, this app, uh, where we're using a lot of the technology together. And, and yes, so because we have so much traction right now, um, we are looking for people to join us. So how is your business model right now, or what's the business model that you plan to yeah. have with uh, tomorrow? Yeah, so we have two sources of revenue. We have the electricity map that generates uh, quite a substantial part of our revenue. So the revenue from electricity map comes from the machine learning we are using that predicts 24 hours ahead how clean the electricity is or the marginal origin of electricity, and that is used in order to optimize process internally in companies. So this is something that we sell. And then on the other side, we're building this B2B solution. In a nutshell, it's going to be a SaaS tool, so you put your credit card online, you couple, uh, you integrate with a couple of your services, for example, your uh, Google Cloud account or uh, your accounting system, and then we figure out exactly what is your carbon footprint at a company mm -hmm. level, exactly like you saw in the app, right. but just on a company level with integrations right. and so on. Again, open sourced, with open sourced carbon models, and companies would then pay us a fee uh, based on how many employees they have uh, in order to get this service up and running. All right, and if somebody wants to join, uh, either helping out with the electricity map or tomorrow, what's the best way they should, uh, they should get in touch? Uh, best way is look at our website, which is here, go on the jobs page, uh, join us on Slack, say hello, uh, maybe contribute a little bit to, to our open source project as well. It's always good to get to know each other before right. you actually move forward. Uh, and else just send us an email, an application. Uh, we love to see people that have built things, you know, have a bit of a portfolio mm -hmm. and send us uh, ideas they might have. And then this could start as a, as a new project at tomorrow. We've had a lot of success with that approach as well. Some personal questions. You worked, yeah. you worked at uh, Google some years ago mm -hmm. and now you're working on uh, climate change solutions. Some people would say, why would you leave such a promising career path? What made you uh, switch and start to work on these solutions? Well, actually, I think the most promising career path is the one we're pursuing right now instead of, uh, instead of being at, uh, at Google, I'd say. No, but honestly, Google is an amazing place. I learned, uh, I think, f an advice for people who want to start companies as well is that spend a bit of time in large organizations because you'll understand what are the challenges as you scale up. You'll, you'll see the best practices as well. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel and learn everything by yourself when you right. start up. That's a small parenthesis. But the main reason that I, that I quit and started my, my own uh, was really that the, the challenge is so big that we cannot afford not to do anything about it. Um, and I still think there's a huge opportunity as well in building the next Google. I mean, Google for, you know, for our generation is seen as hyper innovative, the, the new company that does everything well. But if you think about it, Google is, is kind of a super big organization right now. So what is the next Google going to look like? Right? What, what right, is it going right, to be right. about? And I think that given the challenges we have, the next Google is going to be about carbon emissions. That's the only way we're going to be able to fix the problem. That's the only big opportunity, I think, that lies out there and that generates growth, ideas, enthusiasm, and so forth. Um, so, so for me, leaving with Google with, was kind of like a very natural step and, a, and an even more promising career path, in a sense. All right. So what advice would you give to some 20 something software engineer or uh, college graduate who uh, is looking for a job and um, you, you, you mentioned in uh, your presentation, in a, one of your presentations once that a lot of smart people are working on predicting the next click, the next purchase that you're going to make and uh, we need more people to work on such solutions. What advice would you give to these people um, to do something about it? Yeah, I think if you're, if you're a data scientist or if you're a, com a software engineer in general uh, and you're looking to have an impact, I think, on, on climate change specifically, I think the first thing is educate yourself a little bit about like, the big, big questions uh, and the orders of magnitude that are, uh, that are at play here. And as soon as you look a little bit about those things, I think very quickly you realize how serious the situation is. 
the smallest example right. is that we're still talking about the 1.5 degree, um, you know, Paris not the Paris Agreement, but the Paris Agreement is under 2 degrees, but if you look at the 1.5, on the 1.5, we have only 7, 8 years left with the current rate of carbon right. emissions uh, of budget. Uh, there's no way that in 7 to 8 years, we're going to reduce our fossil fuel emissions to zero. That's just not going to happen. So the 1.5 degree, you can already forget about it. Right. The 2 degree is under jeopardy. We're right now targeting more the 3.4, 3.5. That's yeah. the target. It's really important to, to keep in mind that 3 to 4 degrees, like you can you can multiply it by 2 if you look at the temperatures on, on the country, or on the land surface, right? Right, We're talking right. about 6 exactly, degrees exactly, right? more. Of exactly. Exactly. So, so, and if, and again, last thing is like you are at, we are at 87 uh, percent of our energy usage comes mm -hmm. from fossil fuels, which are causing, you know, three quarters of our gl greenhouse gas emissions. So we are talking about a profound reinvention of the way we do everything, because energy is, in a nutshell is, is, is the quantification of our ability to transform things, which mm -hmm. is the economy in general. So if our ability to transform things has to be reinvented at 80 percent or 87 percent that just shows you you know the amount of challenges but also opportunities that lie into building this low carbon world so if you're a software engineer or a, or a data scientist the best way to approach this is to look at the data and crunch a little bit those things challenge all the assumptions that have been made in the media in the press everywhere and sort of make your own you know um, processes and reflections about this topic because in the process of figuring those things out you're going to see opportunities in places where you can do something you can start a company you can join a company with a new idea a new product whatever mm -hmm. um, one one key question that for example i still ask myself is can you have a world that runs um, only on wind turbines what would it look like to be honest yeah. and if you imagine for a second that you have a, a wind turbine that generates electricity for a truck which is electric, mm -hmm. to go and mine the minerals required to build the wind turbine, the steel, heating up, the boats, electric as well, to put and install the wind turbine offshore. Like what is, how quickly can we make that transformation? Is it even feasible from a material mm -hmm. perspective? All of those things are fascinating questions and most of the data is actually out there because so much data is produced. It just requires smart people to go through, you know, the, the thinking process. And in that process, you'll figure out a lot of super exciting things and in the worst case you'll have learned things that most people don't bother uh, look into so my last question is when is the app coming out yeah when can people find it in the app store <laughs> soon very soon we're working right now on pushing it to the app store so uh, stay tuned and maybe by the time this video is out uh, we'll be able, you'll be able to download it directly on the app store all right i think it's uh, some real great initiatives you're working on thank you very much for the conversation thank and you. i hope we'll meet uh, sometime again Hi, I hope you've enjoyed the video. This was the second part of the interview. The first part is about Electricity Map, a world map that shows the greenhouse gas emissions of electricity by country. 